Hey everyone, welcome to Sped Homeschool Conversations. We are so happy to have you with us. Um, we are live right now on Facebook, YouTube, as well as Periscope. And, um, and we're just excited to be yeah. continuing our our month of march which we're talking about tips and hints and our guest tonight is sarah collins with um collins academy therapy services welcome sarah we're so happy Thank to have you, you with us i'm i'm thrilled to be here absolutely yeah, yeah yeah well you haven't talked about this subject ever it's you know handwriting or you know pre-writing skills for students and i know we're going to cover a broad range of ages too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so um so if you're watching if you know somebody who um has a student that struggles in this area and a parent who is homeschooling or um right now like we're sarah and i were talking about ahead of time if you're 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 kind of homeschooling without a choice right now. Um, we want to help you help your student. You know, this is a time when you can work on some things with your student or your child in your home and they can be fun too, can't yeah. they? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so we want you to um, put your comments, your questions in the feed so that we can we can have you be part of our conversation as well. We, this isn't going to be just us. It's going to be all of us. Um, so, so definitely join in the conversation. But Sarah, as we get started, um, I'm going to pull your slides up, but I would love you to talk a little bit about yourself and, um, and your, your LLC and okay. what you do and how you, you help homeschoolers and, um, and just your passion about what you do. Okay, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so we are a homeschooling family. I was just telling Peggy a little bit before this, this is never in a billion years what I would have imagined um, for our family. But really, we I was working full time. I was I started out as an occupational therapist with pediatrics um, in Baltimore, Maryland. And then um, my, my husband and I, as our kids got a little bit older, I felt like I was really giving my all to all everyone else's kids and I'm um, not mm -hmm. giving so much to my own. I would get home at the end of the day and be like, ah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, at that point I started working in home health care and worked with a lot of families um, and really just loved that dynamic of working with um, all of the people within a home, you know, and, mm -hmm. and everybody's home looks a hundred percent different. Not 100%, but a big percentage different. Right. Um, we have our own culture so, and our family. Right. So mm -hmm. I just really loved, you know, problem solving with families and looking through that way. Um, and it was actually within a, a home that I was at where there was a, um, the grandmother was who I was treating and then the um, daughter, and then she was homeschooling her kids. And she said, Sarah, I really just, I feel like I need to tell you about this and about mm -hmm. homeschooling. And I pretty much said, fantastic for you, but I work full time and <laughs> <laughs> um, you're never going to play out. Lo and right. behold, um, within the, a matter of weeks, my husband um, got a new job up here in Pennsylvania, which is where we currently are now. Mm -hmm. And um, the timing of our move just made it so within the end of that school year, it made more sense for us to homeschool. And mm -hmm. um, I we never went back after that. I just we had the pleasure of being able to um, those first few weeks and months to go to millions of museums and travel all around and just really get to yeah. know my mm -hmm. kids and their interests. And I recognize for all the people that are homeschooling starting, you know, right now that that is not the advantage um, right. and that, you know, extra time that we had. But thankfully, because of that, we were able to um, really hone in on on skills and things that my my kids needed and their interests. And mm -hmm. so that's where we are um, right. now. I that's something that parents can still do. You know, if yeah. your kids are home with you, you're waiting for curriculum, maybe to come right. from your public school. Um, get to know your kids. You're going to learn a lot about how they learn. And um, and that is what the key to right. your child learning is not getting the right curriculum right. and um it's so many people are trying to look for the right thing when they, they mm -hmm. homeschool the, the, mm -hmm. the right thing is getting to know your child yeah and, and you know what i was actually talking to one of my really good friends today and she said sarah um you know we were done with with math in 10 minutes and i was like oh no uh -huh. oh no and i said yes that, that's okay that's normal <laughs> you know they got that concept in 10 minutes that that's okay you could just you don't have to worry about Johnny going to the bathroom and, you know, and Sue is being really bad and talking in the middle, you know, mm -hmm. you, it might only take 10 minutes to get through that math lesson. And that really is okay. That is okay. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, 
So yeah. True. So, you know, I just focused on homeschooling for our first three years and it wasn't until this year um, in this summer, actually, when I went to a handwriting without tears conference, um, working more on handwriting, which is one of my passions and always mm. has been, but um, where it was suggested to me there, she, was, she said, you know, Sarah, the instructor did, said, Sarah, you know, there are so many homeschoolers that would benefit from being able to have access to an occupational therapist. Yes. Um, mm. Now, with occupational therapy laws, I can't do direct therapy except for anywhere in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. So, right. um, mm -hmm. But what I can do is talk with families and really get in and be able to see that, you know, I do everything almost exactly like this. Through kind of like an educational consultant. Yep, almost, exactly. But with, but with OT the OT expertise yes, and how to add exactly. OT strategies in. And, mm -hmm. and one of the biggest things that comes up for me is handwriting all the time. My kids' mm -hmm. handwriting looks really bad or they can't see on the lines or uh -huh. they're still flipping letters or, you know, there's mm -hmm. just so much, which is why this topic I think is pretty pertinent. Yes, it definitely yeah. is. So, so true. And so, mm -hmm. so yeah, if you have a child that struggles with writing and you want to, you know, join in this conversation and, and say, you know, what do we do about this? You know, yeah, we've got an please. expert here. So, um, so definitely let us know that. And I also want everybody to know too, that our show is um, being sponsored by, um, by Bookshark and uh, we're going to learn about them later on, but um, mm -hmm. Bookshark is an awesome homeschool curriculum to take a look at um, that works well with children who struggle. So um, anyways, thank you Bookshark for sponsoring. Yeah, this thank episode. you. Yeah. So, yeah, should we di start diving in? I'm yeah, gonna switch absolutely. over to make sure I can see comments here. And okay, um, perfect. Right. And also, if you share this um, this link, um, you can share the the YouTube um, feed, and, or mm -hmm. you can, if you're on Facebook, you can share the um, the post. This post that we're on right now can be shared anywhere publicly on Facebook, and it, it can be shared in groups too. But um, if you have permission, make sure you mm -hmm. have permission before you share it. <laughs> and then also on Periscope. So that's on Twitter. And so you can retweet this tweet as well. So, yeah. yeah. Good. I don't think I've ever been that many places at one time before. I know. <laughs> we started this in January and it's kind of it's kind of crazy on my end. But we'll yeah, make oh, it I'm work. Sure. <laughs> For sure. sure. All right. So are you ready to dive yeah, in? Here? Let's dive in. I'm excited. Okay. So... Oh, perfect. It is all working. So, um, you know, I really wanted to focus in not on kiddos that are already, you know, writing, but wanted to mm -hmm. backtrack a little bit farther into what do we need to see before we're really working on writing skills themselves mm -hmm. and the actual mm -hmm. pen, paper, all of that. Yeah. Um, and so what are skills and do you want to look for before you know that your child is even ready to begin the handwriting? So mm -hmm. the first two on here, um, cognitive skills to be able to understand even the purpose of writing, you know, and to even exactly. look at mm -hmm. what is the, what is the letter and what does that correspond to? Mm -hmm. um, the second one, this is just my overview and we're going to go in a right. little depth, yeah. but um, the second one, executive functioning skills. So do you have the attention to focus on your piece of paper? Do you have the organization right. to, and the sequencing to know, you know, first I have to put my paper down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring my, my other hand over here. I'm going to turn it. So I'm ready. And then to be able to do all of the different strokes that handwriting needs. Um, that's a lot of sequencing. Mm -hmm. um, Self-control. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. am, am I working here? Am I able to control myself? This is OT and sensory is, is huge. You know, can I, am I okay with this lighting that's going on over here on the side? Is, right. um, you know, are the noises that are coming in from the hallway, is that too mm -hmm. much for me? Can I control myself during all of this? Um, and be able to focus on what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, working memory. So as you're going along, do you know what you're talking about? And can you, and you're writing, can you remember what those things are as you're going? Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So these things, I'm not actually going to go more in depth with today. I think we can probably do it. I could speak a whole hour just on those two themselves. Um, right. I know you guys last week did a lot on um, cognition. And so yes, we, we I did. said, you know what, we're going to focus on those next three, which are all very important in themselves. So yes, yeah, and we have some, some good um, things about 
executive functioning on our website too at spetchelschool.com right. and um, you can find a lot of different resources on that yes. Um, and yes last week we talked about assessing students without tests um, and just how to find out what their cognitive abilities were so so definitely go back and look you know you can mm -hmm. search our youtube channel um, for for a lot of those things but, absolutely yeah. Mm -hmm. yes yeah all right, so see, we got a question from here. a viewer. Oh. Would you would you be fine answering the question before we moved on to the oh, first slide? Sure. Okay. So uh, Maria, thanks for joining us on YouTube. Um, she said, "Great job." When would you recommend introducing lines for handwriting developmentally appropriate? Can I just smile for a second? Because that's my best friend, Maria. So she uh, clearly was like, "I'm going to make sure that you guys." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. <laughs> um, so lines for handwriting are developmentally appropriate. Um, however, it really depends on your kid and their vision skills. And we're going to look in on vision oh, yeah. later on throughout, okay. the, throughout yeah. this chat. So I'm going to answer it a little bit later. Okay. But thank you, All Maria. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So stability itself. Um, mm -hmm. The OT term for this, and what we always say, is that you need proximal stability before you can have distal mobility. So what that basically means is proximal is closer by, and then okay. distal is, is as you go farther out within oh, your so like, right? I would think of so, it as distance, yes. <laughs> yeah, distance. It's the proximity yeah. and, yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes absolutely. sense. Absolutely, it's the same thing. So your hands do not have the freedom to move, your wrists do not have the freedom to move if you are not strong and supported through your core. Mm, so. Mm -hmm. This goes all the way back to developmentally. You know, kids crawl, right. really, and that mm -hmm. is so important because when they're crawling, they're getting so much strength through their shoulders, through their scapulas or their shoulder blades. They're getting it, you know, all of and all the way down into their core of how mm -hmm. you can hold and support yourself. So this, wow. that stability mm -hmm. later on prepares for your writing. So without it, mm -hmm. um, you're pretty much, you're not going to have the freedom of movement within your wrists and your hands. So one of the very, very first things that I talk about with families, and I actually think I have it on the next side. Yeah. Um, with families is if your kid is having a hard time using their hands or you don't think that they have enough freedom for fine motor skills, mm -hmm. stop for a hot second, back up and focus right. more on the core and your shoulder strengths. And even mm -hmm. your, you know, all the way down to your forearms, your biceps, work your way out. Um, yeah. And so what what can this look like? Um, mm -hmm. For little, little, little guys, it's tummy time. Um, yeah. And then as they get older, it's still, let's do some things on your stomach. You know, we can, you okay. can do a puzzle laying on your stomach the same way that you could do it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can laying over or putting a pillow there if you don't want to, but laying over top of that. Mm -hmm. um, you can do the um, scooter boards, you know, those square scooter boards. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. My kids love that. We put it, we have, <laughs> we have hardwood floors. And uh -huh. so I would put one on one end and <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> my <laughs> year old and my four year old bowl with each other, like oh, put yeah. each other down, down and yes. oh. some things. It's better. You know, my boys used but, to roll each other down the stairs in yeah, sleeping okay. bags until you know, they broke same a thing. finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're also walking, they're using their hands to pull their bodies. And so that is going to build right. that, that same um, shoulder and core stability. Um, anything, even on inside line, you know, if you're propped up on one elbow, that's that same stability through oh, one yeah. elbow. And then you've uh -huh. got that mobility with the uh -huh. other hand. Um, climbing outside, I can't. Mm -hmm. I love, love, love the freedom of homeschooling so that we can be outside. Um, mm -hmm. Now in this time, it's a little bit different, although uh, there are, you know, my state itself has closed down most of our playgrounds and trails and things, but right. um, being out in your own backyard, if that's available or mm -hmm. um, within the woods, I mean, it, you're going to be six feet away from sick people out there, right? right? Exactly. Climb a tree, you know, mm -hmm. and until they say we can't do that, please right. go outside and mm -hmm. climb around and move. Um, obstacle courses are the same thing, even within our homes. Um, oh, yeah, my kids used to make them out of every piece of furniture we had. And you know, yeah, cushions off. Okay, you have to jump over this one and do this. 
that is an all day activity if yep. you have kids in the house. <laughs> yeah, take those couch cushions, fly over them, tumble, yep. do whatever, exactly. then build your fort with them when you're done and relax mm-hmm. and watch a movie after, you know, right. after you have done yeah. a physical thing. And then you can say, hey, I was working on handwriting today. Uh-huh, exactly. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Um, and then you can see my boys down here. These are, I have, um, I have four kiddos. Um, mm-hmm. My oldest is 11 and then I have an eight year old. And then these are, they are both now four. Um, they're three months apart. I have one kiddo here full time and then one we do a foster care respite with. So I've got them oh, part time. Awesome. So these, this is them playing um, with their arms up here, you know, so right. are reaching to their heads for those of you that can't see it. Um, mm-hmm. And that is going to give the same stability throughout your shoulder and your um, scapular. We call it the shoulder girdle. So through that whole oh, space yeah. um, to help to build that proximal stability to mm-hmm. give that distal mobility later on. Um, chores, washing windows. <laughs> um, ah. you know, this, is, this is my shout out. Like the, the karate kid with the wax right. on, wax, wax off. On, <laughs> wax off. Absolutely. Do it. Yes. Wax on and wax off. It is perfect. Um, wash those windows. You know, we, um, I do a lot of writing with my kids on windows with whiteboard markers because you can wash that right off the same way. Um, oh, yeah. Or painting on an easel, anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, you know, if you can pin anything up on a wall, even if you're doing pin the tail on the donkey for a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. something that's up up high, anything that is not where you are looking down and your hands are down mm-hmm. here, that's going to work on that core stability in your shoulder girdle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is... Hmm. And it's not it's not a motion we do naturally all no. the time, at least mm-hmm. in our society anymore. Because like you said, yeah, we're down like this. We're over a computer yep. and, um, mm-hmm. you know, just even like putting dishes in, you know, yes. the cupboards and yeah. you have to, to do those types of things. Absolutely. And, you know, um, laundry is another fantastic one. You know, even oh, if yeah. you're having your kids, um, you know, if you have stairs and picking up and throwing your, you know, all your laundry down the stairs at you. <laughs> <laughs> It's more fun. It is um, more fun. But, and it, yeah. Right? They're picking it up and they're throwing it. And that is all upper body and, and shoulder mm-hmm. strength. And then they carry down, you know, the basket. That's right. I wouldn't have them throw a laundry basket at you. That's not really that Right. Fun. No. But, so, <laughs> the soft things in there is good. Right? Yes. Right? So then if they're carrying the laundry basket, that is even more because it's both hands together that they're yeah. carrying it down there. You're having all of that support there. And then if you're loading the washing machine from there, you're doing that at all different heights and it is the same thing. Or when you're done and you have it all folded and they push the laundry basket back, like hold it on the floor and have to push it with their upper body. It's Mm -hmm. all the same, Mm -hmm. very, very same muscles and same thing. If you have competitive kids and you have two of those, you could make really races. Races, right. (laughs) Floor. (laughs) Yep. And now you have your laundry done and your windows washed. And, <laughs> and maybe your floor clean too. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so many good things that are happening. And you have you are nowhere near your pencil yet. Yet you're working right. on all of those skills. Yeah. Um, so once we have that stability um, and you're thinking about, okay, I actually am going to write something, um, mm-hmm. then looking at your posture is also very important. So we want to make sure that people are set up for success. So this kiddo here, um, this is just a picture that I got off of Google. I don't know this guy, but um, he's actually pretty slouched, right? And that's kind of why I wanted to look at it. Um, And that's how we see a lot of kids. Yes, and look how high up his desk is. You know, it's Mm -hmm. all up here. So Mm -hmm. he has to have his arm up really high and then he's crouching over. Mm -hmm. So he's he's not in good posture, Um, Mm -hmm. ideally. What you're looking for is where your wrists are going to have to be an extension a little bit. So they are pointing up about 40 degrees or so. Okay. Um, And then where you're sitting up straight, your shoulders are, you know, not hunched up by your Mm -hmm. ears, but are nice down and your elbows are at the height of the desk. So this guy, Mm -hmm. he's not set up Mm -hmm. for success. Um, And then your feet flat on the floor. So, you know, if you have to make and a back support it too. I mean, sitting on a bench is not typically the best way to do it because then you're having to worry about all of this stability and holding yourself. And so you aren't even giving your hands the freedom for movement. 
-hmm. So did I lose you sound wise? Oh, I don't know. Can okay, I can hear you. I was just getting okay. some feedback. So I wanted to make okay. sure that you didn't lose me. No, nope, I'm not hearing any feedback on my side. So okay. hopefully, okay. That's, if, if you're watching and you do hear feedback, definitely let us know. Um, Maria had another comment about our uh, last discussion on the chores. She goes, yeah. so good for kiddos, so many reasons. Never thought of it as a motor skill activity. <laughs> Gonna have to have my new now homeschooled like many of you children, wash windows tomorrow. <laughs> oh, they're going to love me. They're going to yes. be so <laughs> Don't happy. tell them where you got the idea. They may shut us off on Tuesday nights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is that they are going to be so excited about washing windows. <laughs> Just tell them it's well, if, you the use those, if you use those markers, those window markers, <laughs> if you have any of those in your house, draw on the window and yeah. then have them wash it off. And they'll right. And you know what? We were just talking about that. Um, so many artists are doing free um, illustration yes. lessons right now. Uh -huh. exactly. Instead of drawing on your paper, draw it on the window tomorrow with your white yeah. markers. You mm -hmm. can have, I mean, Mo Willems is one that we said was doing it. You know, you can have Elephant and Piggy up on your white, on your um, sliding glass door tomorrow mm -hmm. <laughs> and send me yeah. a picture of it. I will be so excited. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then Mo have them Williams wash it off. Mark Kistler mm -hmm. is another one to look up. Um, yeah. So, yeah. so definitely there are lots of good ways to do that. Mm -hmm. awesome. So um, once, once you are supported, you also need to have your feet flat on the floor. So again, all these dangling feet, things like oh, that, they yeah. are also making mm -hmm. it so that your body is having to consciously control your posture and not able to well, give you yeah, that. Because you can't movement. get that full permanent yep. stability without your feet. Exactly. Firm on the floor. Firm on the floor. I'm, I'm short. Yeah. I can't reach the floor most of the time when I'm at places. I bring like books to put under my feet sometimes. There you go. There you go. Now there are kiddos that need more input. Um, this is another sensory thing that just really sitting in a chair, they just want to wiggle because they need that that yes, movement. They need the movement. Mm -hmm. um, and sit discs are my number one thing for that. You know, if you're sitting on something, even oh, if yeah. I mean pillows that are really soft are not usually helpful that's not giving any of that feedback either mm -hmm. but um balls i mean you've seen a lot of places that are doing that where you're having to hold more with your core um right. and that's great if your core is strong enough if you're mm -hmm. do not have a strong core and you're sitting on a ball you're not gonna be able to write but um sit discs that you can add into a chair are fantastic you can google those um mm -hmm. they're I don't know, less than $10 in most places. Um, and the other thing would be to tie something around the bottom of a chair, you know, so you can tie, TheraBand is something that you can use, but you could also even, um, oh gosh, what are those called? The They're just elastic things that you would use. Oh yeah, for the, for for working out, they have right, the elastic that bands. works. Mm -hmm. Or even just, um, if, you know, when you have too many things in your trunk and you have to hold your, Trunk oh, bungee together. cords. Right. Yes. Bungee cords. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm oh, looking yes. for. Bungee cords you can hook onto your chairs um, mm -hmm. at the bottom, and then they can have something to kick their feet into. So you are oh, still yes. supported, so but you are getting that sensory input mm -hmm. that you might need. Right. And that's what Nancy said, that they use a ball chair. But those that... That is a good thing. I've never even thought about that. Yes, it can help build core strength, right. but if your child is struggling with that core strength, right. it may not be the best thing to have them do the handwriting with right, right, right away. Or the ball mm -hmm. chairs, some of them have backs. Nancy, does yours have a back on it? Like if they're the balls, but then they have the back already built mm -hmm. in. Those are fantastic because you can be supported and still get that input. Um, it's just well, if you do not point, have I, the core strength, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you're not supported and you're trying to hold your body up here you just don't have that freedom yeah perfect yeah, then nancy yes. you've got it mm -hmm. yep. yeah that's that is absolutely fantastic mm -hmm. it's a great way to go so then and i did um i put a link here to the ot toolbox now this is not my um website but it is another ot and um, it's another one we send parents to also yes, i think that is an incredible website yes it mm -hmm. is an absolutely incredible website and she has so many different things um, on there and chair posture she gives a really good um reasoning why and she'll uh, there's also really good pictures on there of what what you can do um, and mm -hmm. what you should look like when you are sitting to write awesome. so um all right so next so 
So we're seated in a good spot. You know, we, we have good stability. So mm -hmm. here we go. Now we're going proximal down to distal. So then you need your fine motor yeah, skills. Fine motor okay. Skills, yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to back up a little bit again to the very, very, very beginning um, to the reflex. Okay. So oh, primitive yeah. reflexes um, is actually a fairly new area within the past um I mean, it, it was, mm -hmm. I was out of OT school before, um, or out of graduate school before we were really researching on reflexes. So mm -hmm. um, it's been within the last 15 years that people are really paying attention to this. And the reflexes, what they are is they are before you are born um, mm -hmm. and they're usually integrated within the first year or two. Um, right. However, for kids who they're not, and these reflexes are, you know, when you put your hand on your finger in a baby's palm, they curl it right back in there. You know, they, mm -hmm. that's just a reflex. And when right. you turn a baby's head, their arm flies out to their side. That's a reflex. Mm -hmm. It's how they learn that you to have eye hand coordination and it starts to integrate mm -hmm. once they figure out, Oh, I can control that. Right. Um, and that's yeah. all usually within the two years. There's a number of reflexes. Um, I'm not going to go into all of them today, yeah, but they right. all do. We talked a little bit about that on one of our videos. Actually, okay. one of my board members is a neurodevelopmentalist. Fantastic. And so, um, yeah. so just search our YouTube channel for um, for those uh, reflexes. Reflexes. You'll, Great. You'll Great. Um, if they are not integrated, um, there is a lot of sp very, very specific exercises that you can do to help those to be integrated. Um, I would recommend, you know, if you think that they are not you know, mm -hmm. if you can see your kid when they are, you know, you can, you can Google. And like you said, the, you can look up information on yours, but you can Google, you know, what would it look like if my kid's reflexes are not integrated right. and kind of do yeah. that self screening. Um, mm -hmm. But then it would, I would say you would go and get a direct therapy. You know, you need occupational therapy, physical therapy mm -hmm. can address it some too. Um, so, but the very specific exercises vision therapists also do to help you to be prepared then mm -hmm. to move forward. But without those reflexes integrated, you're, you know, all of these skills are going to come very, very, very more difficult, you know, much more yes. difficult. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So we've got our reflex integrated um, mm -hmm. and there's a certain developmental pattern that it goes through for um, all grasps. You know, so babies are first, they've got the reflex and then they're going to use their whole hands together. Um, right. Like you see those little it. kids holding those crayons. Right. right? I know. <laughs> those right like that. Are uh -huh. <laughs> they um, then they're going to be able to start to pass the objects between them. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Then they're going to be able to oppose their thumb, which is basically, you know, your thumb can go to your pinky, your thumb can touch your, right. you know, all of them. And then mm -hmm. you can finally get that pincer, um, which is typically around year one. Um, but it could be a little bit longer. Um, right. And then from there, you've got your your tripod grasp that comes in later. But you have mm -hmm. to kind of go in this progression. You know, so mm -hmm. if you're stuck on and we're still on this whole hand and you mm -hmm. have really good posture and stability and your reflexes are integrated, you need to spend a lot of time on some fine motor and right. your core and shoulders um, mm -hmm. to make sure that you're ready before you're actually even picking up a pencil. Um, so then once, once we are able to hold that tripod grasp, there's also things that you need to be able to do within your hand, you know, so we're mm -hmm. moving a pencil from our fingertips into your palm so that you can move it around and have that freedom of movement. You're moving your hand up and down on a pencil as you're going along. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing typically that you can do within your hand is hold an object and also then hold your pencil. Um, you don't have to be able to do that to write, but your hands should be able to do that. Um, right. Thinking about if you're going into your pocket and you're, you know, you're getting out some change and then you're going to put it in the soda machine. You don't drop all the other change to put your, your quarter right. in. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to kind of disassociate one side of the hand to the other side of the hand. Um, That's a good point. Mm -hmm. So those are all the motor skills I've got. Here's some great ideas <laughs> to awesome. work on those. Um, now, this is a topic that clearly, if you go on Pinterest or anywhere, there are a hundred million gazillion. <laughs> you can get lost in Pinterest. Right, <laughs> of ideas for play um, mm -hmm. <laughs> to build some fine motor skills. Yeah. Um, and I would say that that is 
fantastic, but also don't get don't get stuck on it. I mean, it's it's right. so hard if you're looking at oh, look at all of this colored noodles <laughs> that these people have done, and exactly. And I'm building the rainbow with my colored noodles. That mm -hmm. is, if you are a colored noodles person, more power to you. Fantastic. <laughs> exactly. I'm so proud Find of something you. Something that you as a parent can live with. Yes, yes, exactly. And this looks like a really good idea. And yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right. I was never a colored noodle mom <laughs> or a, you know, make your own Play Doh mom. That was not me. Um, however, my, I do still have done a lot of stuff for fine motor skills. So there are other ways mm -hmm. to do it. Um, right. Tweezers and tongs, you know, anything with those mm -hmm. um, or chopsticks. I still, oh, yes. you know, it, still cannot eat with chopsticks, but my kids love to, and they love yep. to play with them. Um, so just picking things up, moving them around. Mm -hmm. um, today I did do, because I was making fun of rainbows, but um, today, um, since it was St. Patrick's Day, I had them draw mm -hmm. rainbows, and then I put some coins in um, water and froze it, you know? And so they had to melt, oh. the, they <laughs> melted the ice, they were getting the coins out. Mm -hmm. um, my four-year-old was going at it with a chisel, of course. My 11-year-old, <laughs> very nicely, she was a bit sassy today, but my 11-year-old so nicely took hers right over and put warm water on it. <laughs> it all over her face. It's like, okay, well, well, that, that shows their ingenuity as yeah, well. Yeah, right? <laughs> You're working on STEM skills as right, well as... <laughs> right? Different thought might. And then my eight-year-old did get out salt and was rubbing it across too. So uh -huh. no, I, the motor task didn't work so well, but they got their science in, I guess. They, yes, um, exactly. Right. <laughs> so um, tweezers and tongs, yeah. So then my four-year-old was using the chopsticks and pulling out all mm. of his um, money that, you know, he tasted the rainbow after he was a yes. little leprechaun. Um, <laughs> pipe cleaners are fantastic. Wiki sticks, um, those are the wax almost pipes pipe cleaners and yeah. they are mm -hmm. they're fantastic um you know you can make animals out of them you can add them to paper to give an extra line if you need it um mm -hmm. squigs those are called those are little suction cup toys um oh. you can put them on windows too and you're you're pulling them off you can also use them as as darts and then you've got you know target accuracy where you're trying to throw oh, yeah. it at one mm -hmm. specific spot um anything lacing play-doh like i said is fantastic oh, yeah. um fi finger play song so you know where's mm -hmm. pumpkin where's that going right and then and you know what else is fan is great is cotton balls um mm. they you know because they can stick to your hands <laughs> and so yes, you they can. <laughs> paying attention to them and be able to pull them apart and off your hands and mm -hmm. um, they just give you an extra level of um, dexterity because sensory wise, you have to be, I mean, A, you have to be okay with that feeling, but right. you're really having to pay attention to, is there still some on my hands? And most of the time mm -hmm. they're able to get these little teeny, teeny, tiny movements of your thumb is scraping it off your finger, oh, exactly. <laughs> um, especially yes. cotton balls mm -hmm. and glue, you know, make mm -hmm. Santa Claus beard <laughs> it's, it's, or the oh, Easter yeah. bunny coming up, uh -huh. you know, yes. make your cotton mm -hmm. tail. Yeah. Um, that's a great fine motor activity. Um, for older kids, you know, they're done. They're they're not really, like I said, my daughter who took her pot of gold right over and melted her mm -hmm. ice. And we, she was not over into that. But right. she, she is, however, into cooking all the time. She oh. will open any container so that she can bake anything and everything. So opening those containers, Ziploc bags, having to open those oh, um, yeah. if you have yeah. to take something from your container and put it into a Ziploc bag, even mm -hmm. better. Um, right. Video hand-eye coordination. Yeah, yeah, video games. They're all, they're all yeah. happy to do that one. <laughs> yep, yep. And I have such a love-hate relationship with them. But you know what? If you are doing video games on your stomach, <laughs> now we have now we have that core stability and the fine motor right. skills mm -hmm. and the eye-hand coordination. And there is a place for it. You know, I, it is not where I think that a kid should be a, a, on their screen um, all day long, but mm -hmm. there is a place for it, especially, you know, I just ordered my son a headphone so that he can talk to his friends. Right now they're going to be playing NHL with his hockey team because now is a time when he has to figure out a way 
to be more social and more at home. social. Yes, yes yeah. exactly. Um, mm-hmm. Grip strengtheners, which are just, I mean, you, you can get those at Dick's Sporting Goods. They're just mm-hmm. um, squeezing in and out. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then also a stress ball. Mm-hmm. Um, mazes. So that would be, you know, pointing through or mm-hmm. um, for my younger kiddo that we were doing, or he's eight now, but when we were doing skip counting with him, I had him mm-hmm. skip counting kind of um, the dot to dots and going through with a maze and he was tracing them with um, with a dot or marker. You know, those are the big ones that you can hold with your hand. So he would go oh, from yeah, the dot markers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he would, be, you know, two, four, six, eight. He's, think think bingo and golden girls. You know, they're, they're right. Exactly. They're yes. Uh-huh. They're um, huge. Mm-hmm. And you can do mazes also, you know, within a Ziploc bag. So what I'm talking about here is, um, like I said, I'm not typically a mom who's going to make noodles or things like that, but I have gone to the dollar store and gotten um, dollar hair gel or shaving cream and put it inside mm-hmm. of a plastic bag, a Ziploc mm-hmm. bag, zip that up. And then mm-hmm. you are writing in there with your finger. Oh, yes. I've seen that opens. as like a, a handwriting. Yep, exactly. Tool. You could so put other little anything, um, yeah. around Christmas time this year. I drew my son my youngest son, um, a picture of Santa on there. And he was putting all the, I put thin cotton ball, red cotton balls inside and white ones. And so he was moving the oh, red one up to the hat, around. the yeah. white ones down to the mm-hmm. beard. You know, so it's, it is just, some of these things are, they're really fun for half an hour at the most, right. but mm-hmm. it's something different for that day. And if it fits mm-hmm. in and can keep his entertainment, keep him entertained specifically while I'm working with some of my, with my older kids mm-hmm. um, and be working on the skill. It's yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. So yeah, we have a couple comments. Um, okay. Go our, for it. Our viewers, Nancy, <laughs> Nancy said that the, right now they're doing an AP class and chores. Yeah. <laughs> Having extra time at home. Right. <laughs> so That's true, Nancy. Yeah, <laughs> That's good. It's good well, tomorrow they're washing windows and just in the ceiling fans. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Cause I, I, I don't think my cleaning lady's going to be coming to my house for a while. Nope. So my daughter even said, mom, I will clean my own bathroom. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes you clean. will. <laughs> and, and chopsticks. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I love the chopsticks. And, you know, for older kids, they don't feel like, oh, this is, you know, I'm working on some sort of skill. This is, right. you know, well, yeah, we eat with chopsticks once a week in our house. My kids love it. So great. that's great. Well, see, they're, they're clearly uh, with their motor skills. They have it. Yes. Uh, um, so we're going to take a break and hear from okay. our sponsors. Are you done with this slide? I don't yep, want to Absolutely. You. No, I am. I'm going to go on to the next one. It's a good place to stop. So Perfect. I'm going to let Sarah get a drink of water mm-hmm. and, um, and then uh, we're going to hear from our sponsor, Bookshark. So uh, we just thank Bookshark for um, for sponsoring um, a lot of our shows recently. And we definitely want you to check out their resources at bookshark.com. But um, Bookshark is a homeschool curriculum, and it's literature-based, and it's a four-day faith-neutral curriculum. You can see them at bookshark.com. Um, but Kim McNary, a busy homeschool mom, says, my daughter's on the spectrum as well as has OCD and is instantly taken to this curriculum. It's incredibly structured which makes us both ecstatic. The books are great and the kids are awesome too. I'm running my daughter at all kinds of appointments. Well, probably not right now, but um, but she said this the curriculum fits amazing into their busy um, schedule and they are happy as lark. And um, Bookshark just wants you to know Kim's right. Um, that they are a fully planned four-day homeschool curriculum that flexes to match your busy lifestyle. And the detailed instructor's guide lays everything out so clearly that you are prepared to teach in mere minutes. Isn't that wonderful? Um, you just open your guide, gather your resources, which are also included, by the way, and you go. And so it has. they have curriculum for ages 4 to 16. It's available. You can get the full subject package, or you can kind of pick and choose what would work best for you with reading with history, language, arts, science, and math. With Bookshark Literature programs, your children will read or have books read to them 35 to 50 every year. Isn't that amazing? Um, And they will engage with them as well, not just um, listen to them and let them go. So you can download samples at bookshark.com and or request a catalog. So um, so thank you, Bookshark, for your sponsorship. And um, we're going to get back into talking about handwriting and um, and just how to help kids with these pre writing Mm -hmm. skills. So welcome back, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to move on to the to the next section. And if you notice that I have not even really talked about picking up a a pencil yet you know we are still with our right our, our pre handwriting skills and mm-hmm. so 
this next part is so near and dear to my heart. This is my my middle guy here, Caleb. He's eight mm. years old. No, just kidding. He turned nine last week. <laughs> he said he I know we're having a lot of birthdays too right now. It's kind of hard to keep track of all that. <laughs> yeah, so he is he is nine years old, and he um, really really has struggled with reading for a a very long time. Um, and I could tell that something just wasn't quite right, but it wasn't it wasn't that he just wasn't getting it. And then one day he said to me, he was like, mom, how on earth does anyone read when the words are moving on the page? And I was like, oh, no. well, they're yeah. not. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> no, let's, let's delve into this a little bit more. And, you know, mm. within um, being an occupational therapist, I have, um, I have taken courses on vision in the past. Mm. And so I could kind of, recognize it a little bit. Um, but then it took us, so we went to um, a developmental ophthalmologist. Um, mm -hmm. then, we, then we went to a functional vision expert and he was in vision therapy for um, 12 weeks. And this kiddo is um, night and day since mm -hmm. that point in time. Um, and if you look on, you know, if you follow me on, on Instagram, I'm Collins Academy Therapy Services. Mm -hmm. I did a an interview last week with um, his actual the two functional vision optometrists that we worked with oh, on great. what vision therapy is and what these skills are um, that you need mm -hmm. to be able to use that you need to have before you're able right. to write and to see and to read. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, vision is so much more than acuity. It's not just oh, you know, it's 2020 or then I'll get glasses. Because you right. can see here in this picture, I mean, my kiddo's got some glasses, mm -hmm. <laughs> but but it wasn't that. Um, mm -hmm. He could not. My my next door neighbor, and if she's listening, she would be very upset with me. But they were playing frisbee outside, and this poor kiddo did not even see the frisbee coming in front of his face, um, oh, no. and he had a giant black eye. For us. She felt so guilty, oh. but it was not his acuity. What it was mm -hmm. is convergence. So he, right. his eyes were He's not right. teaming together and then we're not moving. So convergence is when you are looking at something far away and then it moves in close, it's almost like going cross-eyed. Mm -hmm. And he did not have the eye musculature to be able mm -hmm. to do that. Right. Um, so if you are tracking something and, mm -hmm. and he also had delayed um, tracking because of the eye musculature. So let me just look, mm -hmm. go through mm -hmm. what some of these things are. Yeah, so definitely it's good for parents to know just, you know, what to be looking for right? and be aware right. of that it could be causing the problems. Definitely. And if any of this stuff sounds familiar to you, there is, I think it's, um, I did not link this here. Oh, yes, I did. COVD.org is on yes. on here. And they um, there is a screening test there where you can look at it and say, um, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what is coming up on my screen. Um, but okay. you can read through that and answer. It's a Likert or a Likert scale, you know, so zero to five. Oh, okay. And it yeah. will give you, okay, do I should I look more into um, vision therapy for my child before oh, even that's a nice having way to go? To, to kind of like self assess beforehand. Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's if um, yeah, if you're right. watching or listening on our podcast and you can't see the um, slides, I will definitely share all of these links in our YouTube video. So um, you can just search the same episode on our, our YouTube channel if you're, you're wanting to find all those resources. Perfect. All right, so eye movements themselves, um, tracking is able to, to follow a target or to switch from one object to another. So going from, mm. um, in, in the case we were just talking about, um, being able to follow that Frisbee coming at him, but also right. the being, tracking, you know, to follow a, word, a line, the letters across yeah. the page, mm -hmm. um, to be able to go that way, um, to be able to follow an object. So if there's something in front of you, can you follow, you know, the old, good old doctor, can you follow my finger here to right. get up uh -huh. and down um, in all quadrants? You know, if you're thinking about if a butterfly, if you're outside and a butterfly flies away, can you mm -hmm. follow that with your eyes? Um, mm -hmm. All of those, those are all signals as far as tracking and you have to be able to do that to be able to read and to write. Um, fixation is to be able then to look at one specific object. So the Frisbee coming in at him, that's the object mm -hmm. he was focused on. And as is it coming at you, can you follow it? Right. Um, convergence. So the eyes moving in together and keeping, but 
the important part of that is to be able to keep a single vision. So mm-hmm. it doesn't mm-hmm. turn into two objects <laughs> coming right. at you. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So you don't end up with that double vision. And then focusing is the rapid and accurate clarity. I'm just going to read it. So for those Mm -hmm. of you who are not, who are on the podcast. So focusing is the rapid and accurate clarity to look from one distance to another, such as from your desk to the chalkboard um, Mm -hmm. or from your desk to your piece of paper that you're copying in front of you. Um, And I was going to just say copying skills that Mm -hmm. you have to be able to do that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, to really work on this skill, my very, very favorite thing that we have done is we have bird feeders right outside of our window in, in my kitchen, and mm-hmm. we put a bird mm-hmm. guidebook right next to it. And so we now know, I mean, oh. we we know a lot mm-hmm. of the birds that are coming there, but they will mm-hmm. go straight from the bird feeder then to look down right at that book. And that is, I mean, that is that clarity, you know, and that focus. Right. Yeah. Like, you have to be from able your to focus distance to your different... sight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Oh, mm-hmm. we have had so much fun. I just remember when I, we first started working a week job and I went to mm-hmm. see a, an optometrist and he's like, you're looking at a computer screen all day. Turn yep. around, look out mm-hmm. your window, you know, yep. on a regular basis because you're going to lose that. Um, right. And as adults, we have to remember that as well. But if our kids are doing school online, which yes. a lot of you are going to have kids doing school online, this is something to think about is you need to get them looking long distances, not right. just the short distances, because mm-hmm. it will really affect their vision and their ability to learn. Yeah. One of the things that um, his vision therapist told us was the 20, 20, 20 rule. So mm-hmm. every 20 minutes, look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Mm-hmm. So that you're making sure that you are switching that. Write that, that reminder for yourself, parents. Yeah, right? <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, 20, 20, 20. Mm-hmm. And your knees for your posture and you're like, so we want 90, 90, 90, 90 for your posture and 20, right. 20, 20 for your vision. Just keep those numbers straight. Good luck. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> Awesome. Um, so, you know, this is kind of what I was talking about before, a mm-hmm. little bit of what the mm-hmm. signs and symptoms of what you might be seeing if vision is an issue that's going to impact your handwriting. So um, right. any double vision, if you're seeing your kids when they're reading, holding their fingers there, you know, going across. Now, that is age appropriate, clearly, at the beginning. Right. When they're younger. Yes, right. When learning. Right. That's and you know what? That's also because developmentally, it takes a while for that for those eye muscles to work. And as mm-hmm, we're mm-hmm. having our kids read earlier and earlier, um, you're going to see that finger move for longer. But if it is past age eight, that's that's when we really want to check it in. Because developmentally, the, the eye mm-hmm. muscles should be working well around age eight. Um, interestingly, if if you um, are learning to read other languages, beso- that Mandarin specifically that goes up and down, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you should be able to do that before age eight because <laughs> your really? eye muscles are yeah, um, more developed down. in that plane than they are going side to side. So, hmm. you know, if you're not reading English, you're having a hard time seeing just you know, switch to Mandarin. Switch. Well, and that was, that's so <laughs> funny that you was say that because my kids first started learning Chinese in, as their foreign language because my son's speech issues yeah. couldn't say his R's. And I said, we can't do Spanish if you can't say an R. No, and there's no. no R's in Chinese. No. <laughs> so my kids learned Mandarin for two years. But well, yeah, so there you go. There's two reasons. If having vision issues, maybe that might be <laughs> there's right. an alternative there or, or a... Uh, compensatory strategy go for that exactly (laughs) um yeah um the other thing if they are avoiding reading and you know what my Mm -hmm. son would uh, he would cry and cry and cry but then you know what as soon as i would put a he would listen to audiobooks all day Mm -hmm. he loved stories but he does not he would not read them Mm -hmm. however if i would put a piece of paper covering all of the other lines Mm -hmm. on it he was mm-hmm. golden. He could read the whole line. Oh, it was that good thing to look looking for. at one thing hmm. mm-hmm. um, and his eyes just could not focus. Now that can be a perceptual thing too. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going to go into that a little bit more. Okay. Um, yeah. But if the words are moving or if you're getting frequent blinking, things like that, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. vision therapy all the way. I cannot say enough about it, about how fantastic mm-hmm. it, it was for my son. Um, but then there's also visual scanning activities and things that you can be doing at home um, oh, yeah. the, you know, the hidden pictures books mm-hmm. or, um, oh, magazine yeah, and highlight great. things like that, mm-hmm. you know, looking mm-hmm. through and even starting, okay. Saying we start up at the top and we go left to right. 
you know, mm-hmm. even working through that. So where where's Waldo? Let's start up at the top and follow your finger all the way across as you're going. Mm-hmm. Um, puzzles, you know, they are huge, especially, you know, we were talking about that stability. Um, I put puzzle pieces on one side of the room and our puzzle over here, we're going to ride our scooter over there or wheelbarrow walk or crawl, mm-hmm. or crawl over, get your puzzle piece, bring it back over, put it in this puzzle over here. Um, and you're, that's all visual scanning as well. I, I talked about the, um, my bird feeders and, mm-hmm. and, you know, that outdoor play as well. You know, if you're looking at something far away um, mm-hmm. and then, or if you, you know, you pick a leaf and then you're going to look at it, you know, close, close up and look at those details. Um, as a mom, I have found, I have learned so much about nature through my own children, but uh-huh. it just wasn't something as, as a full-time, you know, occupational therapist. I just, it was not an interest and in, my eyes have been open to the world, um, through my kids and through homeschooling. But, mm-hmm. um, I will say, you know, if you are looking at something and they're then, their attention is drawn away and then you draw their attention right back to this leaf or this flower and you point Mm -hmm. out something else. Not only are their eyes changing, not only is their attention span changing, um, Mm -hmm. but they're just respect for the world. I just, oh, go outside, Mm -hmm. go outside. Go outside, I know, yes, exactly. (laughs) Wash the windows and then go outside and you have done your handwriting. Um, and nature journals are the same thing. You know, if you are mm. observing something at a distance and then you're drawing it drawing up it, close, yes. um, you're working yeah. on that same mm-hmm. skill. Um, all right. So the hardware itself, you know, was the eyes, um, but then the, ver- the perceptual skills. So it's if your brain can make sense of what your eyes are seeing, um, they have mm-hmm. to your brain has to interpret it, has to analyze it and has to make sense of what we're doing. Yeah. Um, and there are parts of this as well. So visual figure ground, um, think about, you know, you open that junk drawer in your kitchen and can you find <laughs> the can opener in it? Right. <laughs> you have to be able to decipher around uh-huh. everything that's there to be able to pick up that one thing. Um, mm-hmm. And on a, if you're writing or you're reading, you have to be able to see a B is a B on this big, you know, page of all right. of these other letters. Or, um, you know, on your letter flashcards that you have, I have one family that I've been talking with that their son can knows all of his letters if he's looking at this one specific um, card or one set of cards that they that they used. But then you flip it over to another one and he can't decipher it. And we're working on it still. Is it because the background and he can't even pick it out from the background? Oh, or yeah. is it the visual memory? You know, mm-hmm. can he recall the details of that? Um, the same thing as form constancy. So letters are the same no matter the font. So, right. you know, I was going to say font is, mm-hmm. yeah, if, a, if they are one that just memorizes the entire picture yep. versus the structure of yeah. the lines, right. then, then, yeah, you can really. Mm-hmm. Have a hard time mm-hmm. with that. And this is where, you know, the multi-sensory part comes in because if you're just memorizing that one thing or that one card, you know, you're not right. able to then translate that to something else. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, you know, I, I love handwriting without tears specifically for that. Mm-hmm. I have not, I'm going to be completely honest. I've not really looked at a lot of other handwriting. Um, yeah. That's what I little. use for all three of my kids. Yeah, um, because my first two were struggling learners. My third one was not, but it's what yeah. I knew how to teach. And so yeah. we used it. And I love, you know, their, the boards where you actually yeah. put these, you know, build the, the letters uh-huh. first uh-huh. and then you, you know, use fingers and draw them. And right. They have, right. And even yeah, the auditory so component of that, you know, we are mm-hmm. making um, an, an H. So we need a big line down, another big line down and a little line across. So now you have the auditory component. You've right. got the tactile because yes. mm-hmm. you can touch it. Um, you've got the visual because you can see it. Um, mm-hmm. I, you know, I can't say enough about that program. But right. again, I know that there are a lot of others out there. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you have questions about some, I do know a little bit about a lot of different programs, but the one that I have used and loved the most has always been handwriting without tears. Yeah. Um, so I think that is, that's primarily everything that I had. I know we wanted to leave some time for questions yeah. and specifically about perceptual skills and mm-hmm. it, really any of this stuff. So fire yeah. at me. No, <laughs> really good. Um, I 
I definitely appreciate it. And, you know, just, just ideas on how to, we don't even have to pick up a pencil to do writing, right. you know, yeah. and um, I, I hope that if you've watched, you know, through this video that you understand that writing, and it's one of those required subjects here in Texas for, for homeschooling. Mm -hmm. um, you mm -hmm. know, some states have required subjects, some don't. Right. And, um, but but you can be working on these skills and your kids won't even know that they're actually doing school. Right. <laughs> they can be, you know, just out playing and, and you just, you know, purposely, you know, drawing their attention, like you said, while you're out in nature mm -hmm. or putting mm -hmm. a book next to the window or, you know, doing all those things are, it's just stuff we do as parents or, you know, right. we, we can, but if we understand that it's going to add to their ability to learn even better. That's, yes, absolutely. That's nice. And I, I've worked with a lot of families with really um, young kids who are talking mm -hmm. about, well, you know, I'm ready for the pencil and, you know, are we ready to go? And I just, uh -huh. I want to encourage people to back up a little bit and, yeah. and make sure that you've got that core strength and that their vision is ready and that they are, you know, they have all of these skills before you really start pushing handwriting and, mm -hmm. and reading all those literacy things, because you know, what, what you have to teach a, a kid who's ready is going to take them so much less time to learn. It, it really, and yes. Then you're not going to have the frustration and the, you know, the hatred of it. What we want to be fostering exactly. is a love of learning in our mm -hmm. kids. And um, that doesn't mean that we have to be super far ahead in, in writing mm -hmm. and in reading. It means that we, we want to encourage the love of it. Right. So. Yeah, and when they love it, they can advance really fast. Yes. And um, yes. it's, it's amazing when you get all of those pieces into place mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. like you say, it can, they can learn to write extremely quickly. Yeah. Um, the, and if they, you haven't ruined them with, with, you know, practicing, like we were talking about before the broadcast began, all of those handwriting sheets yes. <laughs> yes. that just, they become monotonous. And so, you know, add some fun, add some, you know, multi-sensory things in that, you know, Sarah introduced to us tonight and yeah. um, make it, make it something that they enjoy doing. So they say, when are we going to do that activity? Right. Um, yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's what we want them doing for every subject is, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, to love to love literature to love yes. you know put, yeah expressing themselves right they and they can do that yes now i did not really things. mention um much about cursive and again we could do a whole other <laughs> talk oh, about yeah. that mm -hmm. um for my son the one who i said ha has all of the vision um which now again we're, we're pushing through all of that but mm -hmm. for him and perceptually the motor planning wise for him to do cursive where he doesn't have to pick up his pencil all of the time. Oh, yeah. um, uh -huh. And he thinks it's like art. So he had such, because he had such a hard time with writing and reading at the beginning, he did, you know, kind of find that hatred mm. for it for a while. Right. And we, but he's an artist and we introduced cursive to him and he is learning so much more and so much faster. And he mm -hmm. loves every second of it. Um, we put that on our, our loop, you know, the things that we don't mm -hmm. do every day, but that he gets, you know, during our, we have a loop time every day as part of our schedule mm -hmm. and they rotate through, he's got drawing, he's got cursive Latin, mm -hmm. um, just a couple of different things that he does on different days, but his yeah. cursive days, um, and typing days, he, he loves them specifically mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. So, um, just how yeah, to find great. me from here. Um, yes, definitely. you always sure can. Resources email me with any questions um, for me to consult if you wanted to find out about that, um, mm -hmm. consulting specifically with your family and how that works, um, mm -hmm. homeschoolot.com. You can go there. Um, awesome. And then I post a lot about our homeschool as well as um, just, I typically do a series every week on my mm -hmm. Instagram page. Um, awesome. I planned on doing handwriting all this week to go along with this, but then mm -hmm. I've ended up just doing some <laughs> trying to encourage. This people. week has been, um, yes, uh, yes, a little bit different um, in the homeschooling community for all of right, us. Right, right. So just um, kind we of just want to be a support to all of simple, you that are out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, simple encouragement and, and trying to um, encourage the connection within families. Mm -hmm. um, to, yesterday, I think I posted about make your bed. You know what? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> We're just going to start our day accomplish one thing. And if everybody in your house has made their bed today, 
you have all accomplished something. something. <laughs> so, exactly. you know, um, mm-hmm. But typically I do a series. I did two weeks on vision. Um, one was on the hardware, you know, the vision mm-hmm. itself, and then one on um, visual perceptual skills and things that I've done within our home. Mm-hmm. And it, this goes back um, a little bit before October, once I got the, the whole LLC and everything moving, I was already on Instagram a bit then. But um, so you can find me there. I post almost daily on there. Um, and same thing, my Facebook, um, it's a Facebook business page, but those are all okay. Collins Academy Therapy Services. So yeah. awesome. That's nice love. That they're all the same. So Collins yeah. Academy Therapy Services is yeah. where you can find Sarah. Mm-hmm. And um, and yeah, it's Nancy had, we have one more comment from okay. her when she said her youngest has low tone and a hard time holding a pencil. So so hopefully, Nancy, this has helped a little bit, giving yep. you some ideas on, on how you can work on those. And then she did have one question about another, um, about auditory processing disorder. Yes, we do have videos. Um, if you search our YouTube channel, um, again, our one of our board members, um, Dr. Jan Bedell, um, I did a interview with her and um, she talked about auditory processing and uh, she also has a couple articles on her website and so does um, uh, Diane Kraft is also one of my board members mm-hmm. and she oh, has I love some, Diane Kraft. yeah um, <laughs> and so um, so they've got some some good articles on our website at spethomeschool.com that you can look for auditory processing disorder and just how to some some simple things you can do to start working around that it's it's great to have all these resources that you don't have to buy a huge book or go to you right. know, lots of classes. Here's some simple things to start working on right now. And, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and so, so definitely check out those resources on our website. And, um, yeah, well, this has been so informative, Sarah. Thanks. I really appreciate you taking the time for, for this. And, um, it, it definitely fit the mold for teaching tips and hints this month. Um, Perfect. Because, yeah, this, like I said, this is something we just haven't addressed yet on our show. And we've been going for two years. <laughs> so we got really? a lot of videos. I think we have like 500 and almost 40 videos on YouTube. So um, so there's a lot of resources there. But um, this is great. So, um, so yeah, thank you all for joining us and for your comments. It's been great to have you part of this conversation. Um, and we're going to continue with this subject again next week. Um, we are actually talking with Allison Morrow from Good Schooling. And the topic is, yes, you can homeschool a struggling learner. And so we're talking about everything. And um, it hadn't been planned that you would all be homeschooling probably. Um, but we're going to talk about some options. If um, public school at home is not working out so well, which we have seen happen over and over again when parents have tried to use the public school option for special needs students. Um, I have a feeling the same thing's going to happen when public school goes virtual into your home, that it's going to be a real struggle. Um, And we just want you to know that we're here for you and we can help you make that transition so that you are the one in charge, not the school. And that is legal in every state. So we want to, to definitely encourage you that if um, what the school sends home is not working and your student is getting extremely frustrated, there are other options. Mm-hmm. So, um, and there's people like, like Sarah. And, That's what I was going to say, especially yeah. um, right now I am doing free 30-minute um, consults. So if you, mm-hmm. um, you know, you're in a situation where you don't really know how to change it or how to fix it. Um, exactly. Call, you know, my Instagram has my contact information. You just had it here. Reach out. I'm happy to do this. You know, we're all in this boat together. We're, everybody in the homeschooling community is is very mm-hmm. open to helping, and especially yep. those of us that have been in. I, I'm on my 18th year of homeschooling right. special education. Well, I've graduated both my boys that had the special educational needs, and I have the gifted child left. Um, but we have a lot of experience and yeah. we've been through all of the things that you're going through. Um, I didn't choose to homeschool. Uh, the school sent my child home and <laughs> said, deal with him yourself. Um, <laughs> and now he's graduating from college this semester. Oh. So um, congratulations. That's amazing. I know it's, it just, it boggles my mind. Um, so, so yeah, so we're here for you. And um, so every week on Tuesday nights, but we're adding something new next week. And I told Sarah about this. She, uh, yeah. other than my team and board, she's the first to know outside, but now yeah. you know, it's on, it's on our website already, yeah. but we are hosting a special needs moms night out every Tuesday night after this broadcast starting next week. 
And so what's going to happen is we're going to switch over from a public broadcast to a private broadcast. And so if you join our Facebook support group, which you have to actually become a member of, or if you're not on Facebook, you can get a link to the private feed on YouTube off of our uh, website each week. It's going to be a different feed each week, but then you can join in and we are going to allow you to just watch if you want. If you can come in your pajamas, you can <laughs> comment. Um, but if you want to share a resource, you want to talk about what's going on in your home, you can come on live with me as well. And so I can have up to five guests at the same time. We can all be chatting. It's going to be a hoot. So, yeah, um, so that's going to be so fun. We're going to start that next week. And I just can't wait to get that started because we want to just encourage you, we want to support you. We want to know you're not alone. And, yeah. um, and so that's the way we can do it. So, so yeah, check out our website, uh, spedhomeschool.com for more info on that. It'll be, the link will come out tomorrow for the first YouTube feed. So, yeah. Great. And thanks for all your support, Peggy. You do so much for this community. It's, it's fantastic. It's, oh, this is where my heart is. As, yeah. you know, I mean, I tell people, I used to go to homeschool conferences and cry on my way home because there was nothing like this. And I um, definitely want, want to support all of you. Um, and um, Maria said, uh, you're a wealth of information on homeschooling OT and momhood. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> definitely. She's the we best. Appreciate that. <laughs> We love those good friends that support us. Right? We need them. We, sometimes we think we're going crazy because of all the things we do. So, And we also want to thank Bookshark um, for sponsoring this episode. Definitely check them out at bookshark.com. Um, and in their curriculum, if you're thinking this public school thing isn't working, they might be um, have something to offer. And we do have a whole curriculum picks page on our website. Bookshark is one of them. And um, even one of our board members wrote a review for them on just how well their curriculum works for struggling students. So um, lots of things to check out. So I think I covered everything. Thanks again, Al or Sarah. And um, this this was this was an amazing hour. So I hope you all got a lot out of it. And um, and yeah, Sarah's information is also on our website. She's one of our partners as well. So mm -hmm. um, lots of good things there. So yeah. um, all right. So until next week, everybody. I will see you. Um, there um, but um, have an awesome week and um, enjoy all the resources we're sharing in our Facebook resource sharing group a lot of the things coming out that are free and we're trying to get them out as fast as we can but um, yeah so all right happy St. Patrick's Day happy St. Patrick's Day <laughs> <laughs> all right have a good night Thank you. Bye, everybody